Howdy YouTube, Mark Dreamer here from Refurbished Gentlemen, and today on RGTV is going to be the very first of hopefully many Ask RG videos. And what these videos are going to be is the other side of being a furniture artist. So I've been doing a lot of, you know, how to paint, and I'm doing the Painting Furniture 101, and the long tutorials to show you really cool finishes and how to do it yourself. And now I'm going to get more into the business side. So a little bit more of those questions I get asked about that have nothing to do with painting. And the first question and the question I get the most is about pricing. So I bought this piece at a garage sale. Uh, how do I know what to price it, Mark? And that's one of the biggest questions I get. And then the second question to that is about custom work. So I got this client, they want this finished. How, how the heck do I price out for custom work? So we're going to walk through that as well. So we're going to have two different things we talk about with pricing because it all really ultimately comes down to one thing in you ensuring that your profit margin from what you've spent, whether you're buying a piece of garage sale and the supplies and the paint and all that stuff in your time is whether all of that is worth what you're getting at the, on the other end of this thing, because if you're like me, I do this because I love it. It's a lot of fun. I'm retired Air Force. Uh, I spent 20 years doing something not artistic and I get to do this. I mean, it's obviously growing into more. I get to share with you guys, but uh, uh, when I first, first started, it was all about just, it was fun. I got to paint again and be an artist again, but it's a lot of work. So, I mean, if you're new, you've never painted furniture before, you've just seen this video, it's a lot of work a time and effort if you're doing a high quality, long lasting finish. And with that, you wanna make sure that, you know, when you put your head in a pillow at night, you feel like you, have, you, you did a good hard day's work, but you got what you were worth for that work. So that's the key to this, for your business to last and you to be happy with it and it not become like, oh, I hate this, I don't wanna do this anymore. You need to ensure your profit margin is such that you are happy. And that's absolutely where you need to start from. So we're gonna go to, through two things. First is gonna be painting to sell. So if I bought something from a garage sale, I'm gonna paint it, I'm gonna sell it on Marketplace or whatever. And I have a video for that. Um, I'll put it in the link below, how to sell, where to sell, and get free advertising while doing so. I did a whole video about that. And then, Custom work. So if you're comfortable and ensuring that you, you have high quality products, you're doing all the right things with how you're getting a great finish, then you can kind of step into the custom side of things. And if you're ready for that, we'll walk through that as well. But again, at the end of the day, it's all about you having a profit margin that makes you happy with the work, time, effort, and money that you dropped in on the front end for what you're getting for all of that. So paint to sell. So what I have here is I just wrote up here, set a baseline for a one color finish. So obviously if you're doing one color, it includes a top coat in any way, shape or form that you decide to do that. So whenever I say set a baseline, the baseline is gonna be one color and a top coat. So you need to set a baseline. So we're going to stick with the paint to sell side first as best as I can. I, they, they interconnect a little bit, but we'll start on this side first, and then we'll jump over to custom. So you got to set a baseline. First and foremost, what uh, the cost, what the piece is worth if I was to sell it without painting it. So you start with that. So if I bought a, a nightstand at a garage sale for $10, I know I could just sell it as, as is if I cleaned it up and you know just straight up cleaned it and took it and sold it. I could probably make a profit just doing that alone. And I know I could do that tons of times with lots of things I found. So set that, that, that price and then set your baseline for, because what we're talking about is painting. So what's your baseline for painting it? Again, that one color and top coat finish. So what is your baseline? So you gotta figure, okay, my baseline, just as examples, right? So we're gonna go down this column will be painting to sell. For a nightstand, regardless of what I've, I paid for it, I've set a baseline of 125 is what I'm gonna sell it for. So that means one color, one top coat, that's it. 
And then you go down, run down through the different kinds of furniture that you would have. So what I've done is I've set up a, basically a list of all the different kind of furniture that I would ever do. And I use QuickBooks and I'll do a whole nother video about that because I really feel like it's helpful. That lists all of the, the, the things that I could do and it has it all in there for me. But that's again, that's leaning a little bit more on the custom side. So, but for painting the cell, you just have to kind of know, okay, what, what is gonna be my baseline for what I'm gonna paint it and sell it for. So just going down, you can see like, you know, 125, 295 for a, a three to three dresser, uh, three doors or less, four to six doors for a medium, seven or more for a large. And then I actually wrote in this after I had already drew this all out, a buffet style with cabinets, meaning something that has doors that open and the inside counts as far as what you're going to paint because the more square footage you paint, and that's how I do it, just like people would come to paint my house. The more square footage, the more it's gonna cost. Just point blank, easy peasy. Um, so if uh, if a dresser looks like this, but has cabinet doors and I'm painting the inside of the doors and the inside, then I'm gonna charge more at the tail end when I paint it and sell it. So basically you just establish your baseline. So these are just rough numbers I threw up here. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So I bought this at a garage sale for 10 bucks. I'm gonna sell it for 125 if I only paid it one color and a top coat. So that's what you do. So you set your baseline. Now you're saying, okay, well, I'm not gonna just paint it one color, Mark. So what do I do from there? So you decide how you want to add to your baseline based on you know, whatever you feel like is the right thing, but I use a 10% added model when I do everything. So whether I'm painting to sell or I'm painting for custom, I do a 10% model. So that means 10% added to my baseline based on anything else I do to it. So if I paint this piece one color, I distress. So let's say I distress and we'll put a D here. I should come down here so you see it better. So distress equals 10%, okay? Glaze equals 10%, right? So everything that I did above and beyond the one color top coat, I add 10% to my baseline. So you can see how you go from what I would normally sell for $400 for one coat or one color, one top coat, now becomes 480 for that same piece, right? So you're getting, you know, that, that profit margin grows based on the work you put in. So that's again, falling back to the very beginning, you have to have profit margins that make you happy, that you're getting what you deserve based on your quality of work and time and supplies and all that kind of stuff. So you set your baseline and then you add as you do stuff to it. And then of course, when you're painting to sell, you know, I found, you know, it's, it's a tricky thing because if you're really flamboyantly unique with nine different colors and stuff like that, you know, it might be harder to sell and you may not likely get, you know, like nine, you know, different 10% added on for the work that you did. So you, I mean, you have to, if the way the, you know, the pros and cons of doing elaborate finishes, when you're painting to sell, and then also, you know, how much you're gonna add. So that's kind of how I do it. And it gives you just a very generic, very easy to go by baseline from your original one color, one top coat to adding in additional things that you do. And again, that's for painting to sell. So you just need to know if I buy this piece. So this is a great example of, talking through profit margins. And when people ask like, hey, what's the best selling piece or whatever you wanna call it? I always go to a large wide dresser because the profit margins are always larger, one, and it's a multi-purpose, multi-use, um, highly functional piece of furniture. So if you can find a really great wide dresser for a really good amount, you're gonna get garnered your largest profit margin because 
people can use it for a number of different things, especially nowadays people put TVs on them in their living room, all different kinds of things. So let's say I bought this dresser for 50 bucks, right? And I found lots of these for 50 bucks. And I've put, you know, one, one color, one top coat, and I'm able to sell it for 700. That's a great profit margin, makes me very, very happy, right? So then if you add on to it, you add the 10% as you go. So you figure out, okay, what is it worth for me to buy? What would it be worth without painting it? And then what's my baseline if I do paint it? And then what is it, what would I sell it for if I add more stuff? So those are kind of your steps to go through. So for me, um, I just I just like finding cool pieces, um, things that inspire me to paint them. So it's not necessarily, I mean, it's been from nightstands to buffets to I mean, all the different kinds of things. So you just have to figure out what works best for you. And if those profit margins make you happy at the end of the day, because if you're doing a job and you hate it, you will not do it for very long and you will not put a lot of effort into it. Um, so that's one of the things, one of my mottos is faith, passion, and hard work. You know, I have faith that I'm doing what God using God's gifts and talents to me to paint and share and do all things I do. Um, I have a lot of passion behind it and I work really hard at this business that I've created and the finishes I do and all that stuff. And if you got all three of those things, it just flourishes. And that's what's happened for me. So if you have those things, you're good. But if it starts to become where hard work is not fun and you don't have that passion behind it, it's all going to just unravel. So you really have to ensure, you know, at the right back at the very beginning of this thing that you set a baseline that's gonna make the profit margin that you want, okay? So that's painting to sell. The concept for custom is almost identical except for the fact that you're not putting into the cost that you purchased the, the item and that you're selling the item. Now you're talking about just strictly a service. So I'm providing a service. I'm not selling something to someone. So when you're providing a service, then obviously the cost will be less because you're not selling the actual piece itself. So you look at just, I mean, here, let's come down. Let's come down here. So we're going to look at that large, same large dresser. I'm going to establish the same thing. I'm going to set my baseline for custom painting this dresser one color and a top coat. Because every time I say one color, you know it has to be top coated. So just, I mean, your baseline is that, right? Regardless of what you do in and around and in between, it still always has to be one color at least and top coated. So those are things that are your baseline. You won't add more to do a top coat. Just make that your baseline because they all need it. So if a client brought me a, drawer, a dresser like this, it would cost around this much. So again, these are just numbers I threw up here to give you an idea. Um, it will can and will fluctuate depending on what region of the country you're in. I can tell from tell you from personal experience moving from you know the south to the Midwest, um, my pricing definitely had to change based on that. So you have to do your market research and figure out what your area will yield as far as this being a service or just painting and selling pieces and go from there. Um, so just definitely do market research on that. So, but using this as our baseline, you know, John brings me this piece. I tell him initially it's going to be 325. That's, that's your baseline. So how I do it is if they don't know what they want right off, right from the beginning, I will send them an estimate. And that estimate will say, based on a one color, top coated finish, this piece will cost this amount to paint. But anything additional will cost 10% for each additional item added. And then I'll put in parentheses, distressing, additional colors, you know, glazes and antiquing waxes, those kind of things. So they know right out the gate, right before anything's even started, this is your baseline. This is how much it's going to cost for me just to paint one color on this thing. And they are like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, well, but I want this, this, and this added. And then they know right, up, right from the beginning that it'll be another 10%, 10%, just like I did when I was doing my painting myself to sell how I'm doing it in my head to make sure I'm getting what I deserve for the work. 
It's the same thing with custom. It's just, I have to relay that message to the client so they're aware of, you know, I could do it for this for one color, but if you want distressing and glaze and the top sanded down and stained, it's gonna cost X, X, X amount more. And I do a 10% model just because it's just, it's just easier. You know, if, if doing a second coat of paint doesn't really cost 10% of the cost of the item, but something else costs more than 10% of the item, if you're really looking at like my time and the supplies, it all ends up equaling itself out. So for me, it was just a very simple way for me to track it and for me to relay that information to my clients. And so far, I've never had any issues with that. They all seemingly love that idea, um, have been very positive, got a lot of positive feedback about using that 10% model. So again, you start here and then it'd be, you know, they use refurbished gentlemen, let's say, my color, and top coated, it would be this much. And then 10% for distressing, 10% for glaze, and then you just add that in there. So, you know, if it's, you know, 3250 and 3250, that's gonna be 65, right? So $65 plus this is gonna be almost $400, right? So you're getting 400 bucks to paint, distress and glaze, and then ultimately top coat this piece. And that's how I do it. So it just, having, a set like uh, incremental amount at 10%, I'm telling you just has made it so easy because you could really get into the weeds of, well, technically it's gonna cost this much for me to use this much paint and that much this. And then it just get, I'm telling you, people get a little frustrated with that and they just want, they just wanna know what it's gonna cost. They wanna know up front, they wanna be comfortable with it and then they're gonna, you know, pay whatever they're gonna pay. So, so that's how I do it. So we have painting to sell and custom across both of these. You're going to set a baseline that you're good with. That's a good profit margin that makes you happy at the end of the day. And then of course, when you're selling the piece, you're going to charge more because you're actually selling the item itself. And then for custom, you're going to, you know, it's just going to be a service. So it's going to be a little less. And then you add in 10% of anything that's been added on either side from your baseline. And that's pretty much it. I mean, for me, it's worked really, really, really well. And uh, I use QuickBooks for my custom work. And again, I have a list of every kind of piece of furniture you'd ever use with my baseline amount. I can type up an estimate, send it to a client with that same little disclaimer in there. It's one color top coat and anything additional will be X amount more. They can shoot me an email back. That looks great, but I'd like this, this, and this. I'll reshoot a new estimate with the specifics. And then they'll say, yep, that's great. And then I'll convert that estimate to an invoice. I'll send it for payment. And how I do it, since we're, we're on that same line of, of payment or, um, you know, pricing, uh, how I do it is it's always 50%. So to book with me, no matter how far out it is, whether it's two days or, you know, two months or whatever, it's always 50% to establish a booked spot with me for custom painting. And I, I feel like 50% has worked. I haven't had any clients with any issues with that. And it also is non-refundable. So another key part to this is, you know, you don't want to have somebody book and then pull back and then you're stuck with a slot where you could have got somebody in. So you need to make your deposits non-refundable to ensure, you know, that, you know, A, the people are serious because you will get people that'll ask all these questions and have, oh yeah, I'm going to bring it, I'm going to bring it. And then they never do, you know, so you really want to make sure it's serious. And then it just makes you look more professional too, because you know, anybody in a service-based business, especially something like this, where it's very uh, uh, artistically based, is gonna expect a deposit to book the slot or what they're doing, knowing that the slot could be taken and or you have people waiting that you missed out on. So you missed a profit that you could have had. So do the 
That's how I've always done it and it hasn't been any problem. And I always do it to book and I always make it non-refundable. So if they pull back, that's on them. And it's written in the contract and everybody knows what's up. Well, I've never had any issues. I mean, I've had the best clients. It's been amazing so far. I've been very, very blessed with that. Um, so um, no issues there. So, so that's it for pricing. Um, hopefully that kind of gives you a behind the scenes look of how I do it. Again, I've been doing this for four years. I know there's a lot of my fellow artisans that have done this for a career. Uh, so, you know, 10, 20 years and they may do it a different way. I'm not professing to be the expert or end all be all, but I, with the sharing that I've been doing with through YouTube and Facebook, I just really wanted to give my perspective on things, knowing that I've been successful and I want to help others become successful as well. So I wanted to just share what I, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it with these ask RG videos and just kind of give you that perspective from me, from someone who's been doing it for now four years and been successful doing it this way. Basically from day one, this is how I've been doing it. There hasn't been a whole lot that has changed other than the fact that I started with just painting and selling and then I added custom later after I really felt my, my work, my craftsman, craftsmanship was professional enough to, to, to deserve to take, you know, grandma's, uh, special dresser that they've handed down and now bring it back to life and paint it for someone who it really had a lot of meaning for, you know, that's that there's some pressure there. So, um, you know, you want to really make sure that you're doing everything very professionally before you start taking custom work. So, but that's it for today. Um, again, uh, if you have any questions about this, if I missed something, hit me up in the comments below. And then also if there's a different, question you have that we can do the next Ask RG video on, please drop that in the comments below as well. So I can continue doing these along with my finishes video, my step-by-step -step tutorials and the painting furniture one-on-ones, which I'm going to continue pumping out. You know, and those are, if you haven't seen already, are just the basics, the very, very basics of painting furniture. So, but that's going to be it for today. Uh, hope everybody has a blessed day and as always, happy painting.